Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another tutorial for you, but this time it's actually gonna be for OBS and stream elements. So I'm gonna be teaching you how to get the best looking green screen for when you're streaming. This is gonna be for small to medium sized rooms, so I'm gonna be showing you the best way to do it and the best way to set things up that I've found works for me. And as you can see right now, I have the green screen going on. Um, if you think that looks good too, then let's go ahead and dive right into it. All right, so we have stream elements open. Let's widen this up a little bit. And now you see what the real scene looks like behind me. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll some footage and explain the setup and how I've got this look right here. Now here's what the setup looks like from the side. You'll see my key light pointing at me and then a good foot behind me is my two soft boxes pointing at my green screen that is sitting probably about four feet behind my chair. Here's another angle from the camera's perspective. And here's another angle of my soft box lights hitting the green screen. So let's go ahead and turn these bad boys on. Next, turn on your key light, it's gonna light you up. And last thing is we wanna turn off our ceiling light because that will interfere with our entire key. And now the green screen looks really bright and well and evenly lit. And now our setup is complete. We should have little to no green bleed over because of the green screen is far away from us. So let's go ahead and jump into stream elements. All right, so back in stream elements OBS, let's go ahead and adjust this video to make the green screen look the best it possibly can. Now, if you set up everything the best you could, you have your key light hitting your subject, which would be you typically, and then you have your two fill lights evenly lighting your green screen or blue screen. The key is to have this the most even light possible and the furthest away from you as possible. The blurrier it is and out of focus, the better. The more in focus you are, the better. The other thing is you want to make sure you're recording yourself in the highest frame rate possible so you produce the least amount of motion blur because motion blur is hard to key out because it's a blend of the next frame and the previous frame. And so you'll see a lot of webbing and things like that. So assuming you have a similar setup and it looks pretty much like this, make sure you're in the dead center, of course, because you're going to be doing some cropping as well, because we want to cut out basically all this extra light inside that we don't want anybody else to see. So first thing is go ahead and open your video source right here. Mine is my cam link and go to filters. And then from here, let's widen this up down here in the effects filters. You can hit the plus sign and then you want to do chroma key. You can also do color key, but it's actually not going to work the same as chroma key. Chroma key is a lot better. Now, chroma key is a little bit intensive on the CPU. So if you are keying something out every single frame that you're rendering or streaming or recording, then it is going to produce a little bit extra computer power on your computer. So if you have a weak computer or a medium end computer, you may actually experience your CPU usage to go up and that could cause frame drops, lag spikes, and just make your stream not look too good. So be aware that chroma key does take a little bit of computer processing power to do. So let's select it and let's just call it OK. OK, and from here, it looks like it auto detected its default green, but we're going to change that. So you want to make it the most accurate colors possible. And so if I undo this chroma key, it's going to bring back my green screen. I'm going to go to color key type, go down to custom, and then I'm going to do select color. And then I'm going to do pick screen color. So I'm going to move this out of the way choose pick screen color and I want to choose this color kind of near my head. Now that's the most accurate color. See, this is the default one it chooses, but this is actually what my green screen's color is on my camera. So I hit OK. And then we go ahead and activate chroma key one more time and it takes out a lot. And this is because the similarity is way too high. So we're actually going to just drop the similarity down and you're going to start seeing your subject come through and you're good to go. So if we go back to low, you're gonna start seeing some weird noise and you're gonna see the green lines all around their head. So if you bring your similarity up slowly, you'll see the lines disappear. And once you have no more green around you or very little green, tolerable amounts of green, then you're good to go. The higher this is, the worse it is gonna look. So I'm gonna keep this right there. It looks pretty good to me. Now you can see when you add a green screen, it's actually taking micro amounts of color out of everything on the whole scene. So if there's any kind of green reflecting on your head and whatnot, um, it's going to do its best to take that out. But it's also going to desaturate the colors a little bit. You see my red shirt's like looking maroon now. Next thing you can adjust is the smoothness. If I drag this to the left, I'll show you what it does. And you'll see it's almost like it's making it rougher when it detects the key. Um, so you can see a little bit on the outline of myself. Now, some people may want to go for that look, and that's cool. But if you drag the smooth to the right, it's going to reduce the line people see. But if you drag it too much to the right, it's going to be reducing your entire picture. and You don't want that. 
there seems like a pretty good number for me, 92, 93. Key color spill reduction basically reduces the green even more and desaturates. So if you bring this up to the right, you'll see the whole scene just become black and white, desaturated. If you bring it all the way to the left, you'll see a lot more of the green outline on your subject and your chair. So putting this at a nice number, maybe over here, you can desaturate a little bit because we can increase the saturation with color correction afterwards. So that looks pretty good. About 150 looks good to me. So if I move, you see a little bit of lines on my fingers, but it's not too bad. It actually looks pretty good. You can do a little more testing and adjust the numbers with different body parts in here, like my hand right here. So if I do the similarity up, it'll reduce more around my hand. That looks pretty good. Now I can see barely any line around there. That looks pretty good to me. Again, it looks a little bit desaturated, but that's okay. And once you're satisfied with it, let's go ahead and add another effect. And that's going to be color correction. Let's go to the plus sign. Go down to color correction. Hit OK. And then we can start messing with this if you wanted to change the colors, brightness, saturation. We're going to increase the saturation. And that brings back the life right into our face that the color key spill took out. And so look at that. Plus 0 0.35, 36. It right there looks pretty good. Brings the color right back and keeps the green out of here. Now looks pretty good. Now for the final one is go ahead and hit the plus sign and we're going to do crop. Crop pad. Click that. Hit OK. And then this basically means how many pixels from this side is it going to cut into. So from the left, how many pixels do we want to cut out? This is where we start kind of guessing and then adjusting. So I'm going to say like 300 pixels and you see it cuts off the left side out of here. So we're going to cut it out even more. I want to cut it right to here. So where this line is so maybe 320 pixels see what that looks like nope a little more so it looks like a little bit more than 360 so maybe 370 370 looks pretty good to me so let's match that on the right hand side 370 we can go a little more that looks good so we hit okay and so once we cut that out and you're happy with that go ahead and hit close and you'll see you are totally green screened into OBS. And that's going to be the easiest and most accurate way, simplest way, hopefully, to explain to you how to get the perfect green screen on there. And that's going to wrap up the video. I hope it helped you out. And if it did, maybe shoot a like down there. That'd be pretty cool. I have a little uh, like button that you can hit and a subscribe button if you want to see more tutorials. And if you want to try out Stream Elements OBS Live, you can in the description below. There's a link there. It is basically OBS, but all the cool things about Streamlabs. So it's less cluttery and it runs better. So give it a shot if you want. I use it every single time I stream. So if you've seen my streams, then you know it's pretty good. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. I want to take a second to thank my super patrons, LMC and HPL Gamers, and of course, all of my Twitch subscribers.